nice work. Boot. Yeah, you left nothing behind. Yeah, here. Yeah, you didn't leave anything in the water. I've just been standing yeah. there. And when you, when you. Great. All right, a few technical issues. Oh, it's just, it's just Western Australian <laughs> signal, mate. Right, let's go again. Let's do that again. Okay, so is this working now? Right, let's go again. Let's do that again. Okay, it's a little bit better. So we'll go to streaming. Bing, oh, Bing, how are you, bud? Okay. Now let's try that. Is that better? Hey! Finally, a bit of joy. Okay, excellent. Everyone's still in here, which is good. Good, good. All right, we're doing well. Let's go through here. Okay. We've got YouTube back. There. Good. Advanced freshwater fishing techniques. That'll be fine. That's all stable now. Right, I don't know how much we missed out on but uh all right now can uh whoo, everybody let me know if they can hear me from here with this I must put that up there I think right is that better about right can't do anything about that i won't make the speakers and that sort of stuff i'm just trying to uh get them to go it's just a bit of a pain so what we're going to do now is there's one other oh hey, hey you know how i said you don't catch fish normally on spinners hopefully this stream is still going i got proven wrong i actually cast that close enough to um, the snag, right? Uh, redfin perch love. Uh, it's the first time I've caught a perch on a um, spinner in a dam in 20 years, right? So here we are, bud. And what they'll do, right, is when you hook redfin perch like this, 
Okay, there you go, people. Another little ready. Um, because they're such a predaceous species, they do eat their own um, species. There we are, lovely little ready. Okay. See, bud. The reason why. Um, the reason why this had um, weed on it, okay, is when the little red thing got to, um, uh, when the red fin got to the weed bed, right, it um, dove into the weed bed. That's not a very good quality, is it? That's what we'll do. Look, people, I'm just going to do something here. Okay, I'm going to throw a raid to Australis T. And we'll stop streaming on one platform, on one channel, right? And then that way it may improve the signal. So let's see how we go. Slash raid. Oh. Australis TV. Go. Oh, God. Enter. All right. So what we're going to do, we'll just go to Australis TV. We'll go off Australis Fishing, and then hopefully that solves the issue of the um, poor quality, okay? I don't think we've got enough data to download. All right, now that's better, isn't it? Okay, so we don't have enough data to um, run. Welcome to Western Australia. Welcome to my world. <laughs> All right, great. That's better. And hopefully that solved the issue of the audio as well. Okay, so let me just... Uh... Right. Okay, now hopefully that solved the issue with the audio. Looks better already? Great. That's awesome. Thank you to everyone that's watching on YouTube as well. Okay, fantastic. Takashi, hello my friend. How are you, bud? Thanks for popping into the YouTube chat. Hey! Right. <laughs> yeah, I was never going to be a ballroom dancer. I probably could have cleaned the ballroom, but you know. Right. So, what we're going to do now is, we've just caught a fish from that spot, so we're just going to cast back again. Alright, yo. I mean, this is how lucky we are in WA. We can just, um, you know, pull up to a dam that's on private property, and as long as you do the right thing, the owners, um, you know, leave you alone. So... Got a little bit of air on that. So what I'm going to do now, now that we've got the um, the broadcast stable. Hey, Phil H. How are you, bud? Welcome, mate. How's work going, Phil? Right. Let's go again. All right, we're right on the snag again. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. Right. Come on, come on. Already had a little bump. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, people, is we've already had our first little fish for the day. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you a couple of advanced freshwater fishing techniques, okay? So, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you, okay, how to mix fly fishing with soft plastics, so you can fish 
freshwater flies, still catch fish, okay, and fish your soft plastics and your freshwater flies at the same time, and it is so easy, right? You just would not believe how easy it is. And if you have never fly fished, oh, I, I, hear, I hear you, mate. Um, if you haven't fly fished before, it's a really good transition for you, and what it does, it just allows you to, um, well, what it does, it just gives you an option, you know? I mean, to get set up in fly fishing, you wouldn't really get much change out of a couple of hundred dollars for a good outfit. That's rod, reel, line, leaders, and some flies, right? For a half decent one. There are cheaper ones, but a lot of them are just really quite soft spaghetti sticks, okay? Now, the other thing is, too, with this, okay, if you've already got the fishing tackle to fish soft plastics, and spinners, you've already got the gear. So let me show you how we can modify our tackle. Okay, I'll just get the gear for you. So, oh, that's the one we used yesterday. That's the one. Oh. So, what we're going to incorporate. Okay, what we're going to incorporate is we're going to incorporate soft plastics and fly fishing tackle. Very, very easy to do. It's going to save you a lot of money and it's going to give you a little bit of an introduction into both types of fishing. Okay, right. Right, so initially what you'd need, okay, is just get yourself a little weedless jig set up like that. All right, and we fish soft plastics on this seven foot rod. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it nice and steady. The secret to fishing with soft plastics and freshwater flies, okay, is to fish it slowly, right? Painstakingly slowly. Okay, that's how you do it. You just fish it so slow, you nearly fall asleep while doing it. So the first thing you're gonna do, right? And the other thing is too, you can fish, like in Western Australia, you're not allowed to have more than three hooks on the one line, okay? Oh, there's some little red fins swimming through the water just here. What they'll do is they'll cruise just under the surface and you'll see a little dorsal fin, just the, about one or two mil of the dorsal fin sticking out and it looks like a little V belting along, right? And this way, it just saves you that initial expense. So we'll just do a little loop knot here, right? And, you know, I've been fishing like this for, oh, oh years. I, I think I first started fishing like this in the 80s, just trying it. And obviously, you get your critics. Don't listen to them. As long as you're catching fish, it works, you know? Okay. So, what we do here is this. Okay. So, we just do a little loop. Probably don't need that much. It just makes it easier to show people. We bring this through here like this. Okay. Bring this through here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fish with a little loop just above the soft plastic because that gives it an action in the water if you clamp your fishing line um, tight onto any fly or soft plastic or lure you'd be better off casting a lump of wood in the water because what it does is it just holds it in place and it doesn't let it move so if you've got soft plastics you want the eye of the soft plastic like that to virtually be anchored with the line so when you lift the rod tip the soft plastic will dip up and then when you drop the rod tip it'll drip dip down head first if you wiggle the rod tip it'll wiggle in the water and it just makes it easier for you to get an action going with it okay so we'll do this one two three mm. Mm. seven's okay back through here like that Don't make the mistake. Of trying to pull your knot towards the hook, pull it towards your main line. Right, that'll hold in place. Here we are. 
And we actually did this yesterday on the fly fishing tackle, okay? So, let's just bring this round through here. Right. So what we've got now is we've got the little jig head in place, right? And what that's going to do is that's going to obviously cast out, but that's also going to take our flies out with it, see? Okay, and then what we do is about, I'd say, I don't know, 18 inches or 40 centimetres from that. We'll just do a nice big dropper loop. Whoops. A lot of people do drop a loops incorrectly. Okay, so what we have now is we have, okay, we have the soft plastic at the bottom and we have the drop a loop here. So this is good because it enables us, right, to tie off here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to measure how much I need. Um, I'm just going to measure how much. I need, oh, hang on, I'm still in it. Right, no, that's not what we want to do. Excuse me for a second, people. So what we've got to do now is we've got to judge how much line we're going to cut off this to allow us to half hitch this over. There we go. So that's going to be a nice um, nice length leader. Because the fly doesn't weigh much, it'll sit perpendicular to the line, and it's not um, touching the um, like soft plastic. So then what we do is we come in here. We just do a little triple hitch to lock the... Um, uh, leader off the main line in place, right, like so. Let's just do another one. And what that does just gives us a bit of insurance in case we get a um, uh, larger fish. Right, there we go. So basically that's now locked in, right there, beautiful. And you can tell that it's locked in properly because it's perpendicular to the um, line. And if you want a little bit of extra insurance, right, once you've done that, to the um once you've done that to the um uh uh drop a loop just do another little half hitch or double hitch on the main line and away you go okay so what we do now then is right so what we've done there is okay we formed a beautiful little drop a loop that's going to sit nicely in the water the fly is going to sit on top of it and what it's going to do it's going to look like the little fish is chasing another little uh critter okay now what i want to do is i'm going to be a bit cheeky today i'm going to try and do it so that we get three flies on the hook right so i'm going to have a bit longer than normal leader right and that's going to leave me enough room to uh basically um that's going to leave me enough room to do another um, half hitch again a little bit later. So we're just going to chuck that in there. Right, bring this down here. Alrighty, so we've got the, uh, the swivel. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, this is quite long and it's going to be hard to manage, but we'll be okay. With a seven foot fishing rod, it's a lot easier to manage longer leaders than a six footer. Just gives you that option. Okay, in there, like that. Have we actually got anyone in Australis TV? Because no one's typing in chat. I'm worried that I've lost the stream and haven't realised. So if anyone's in Australis TV, can you just type something in chat so that we know that you're in there, please? Just purely <laughs> for my benefit.
Thanks, Synapse. Pub test. Cyber trout, how are you, bud? You're just in time, mate. I'm going to show you how to fish fly fishing tackle with soft plastic cyber trout. Now, we already got a little ready on a um, uh, spinner, right? So what we got is we got the soft plastic down the bottom, and we've got the dropper loop for the um, fly there, okay? So what I'm going to do is a really good fly pattern for perch is just a good old-fashioned uh, black matuka, which is a New Zealand trout fly. Um, I think it was originally tied from the matuka feathers, but anyway. Is it the bird called the matuka? We call it the swamp hen. Right, so what we're going to do is here, right, we've just got a little streamer fly there, like that. Right. Going to put this in here. I haven't tied this fly. Now remember, what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to do a little centaur knot, or centaur knot, whatever it's called, because it doesn't use that much um, uh, line. And further to that, um, of all the knots, it's not the worst one for sort of clamping down on the line. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our go-to soft plastic from yesterday. Right, which is the gold shad. This is the one that caught the fish yesterday. So what we've got now is we've got the fly in a little dropper loop here. Okay, that's going to sit there like that. See, that's much what it's going to do in the water. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this in here like that. Bring that. around like we did yesterday bring that in there like we did yesterday getting it perpendicular through the soft plastic oh that's split that's not good jim why were you so rough mate anyway let's try a little different way of doing it now this is the more traditional way but it should still work we'll try it come on but All right, so let's see how we go. Let's see if there's any method to the madness. We've got a stable stream, everything's good. Okay, so now, I've just got a bit of a braid loop over the, um, I'm not gonna cast that one too far. Right, there we go. So remember, fish it slow. Okay, and what it'll look like, it'll actually look like the fish is chasing the little matuka fly, okay? That's what it looks like. So what we'll do here is, now we'll try a bit bigger cast, let's go. Oh, I might hit the car there. We're still getting good distance on it. Right. Because what'll happen is, when you move the soft plastic, the fly moves as well, and then when it stops, the fly's still moving in the water. Oh, get out of there. Now, is that a snag or a fish? Hang on, bud. Snag, I think. What did I hook there? Did you take me into the snag, you little bugger? Oh, get out of there, come on. That's a bit better. We saved that, didn't we? Cheeky little bugger. I thought I hooked a fish there and it wrapped it around the snag. But we'll never know because it's just said, see you later. Rightio. Hang on a second. Very deep here. All right. 
right, so we have got a bit of weed in there as well. Great. All right, that's good. Yeah, the hook, the hook wasn't stuck in the snag. Just something happened there, okay? All right, so, all right, everything's stable. Brilliant. Now, What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this cam to zoom in a bit and hope that we've still got signal on it. Let me just take that off there. Should still work, should still work. Let me just um, put this in here. Right, so we've got the signal. All right, so check this out, people. All right, let me just make sure this is okay. All right. So, what happens is, and you see some chips going, great. So, let me just, uh, right. so just get out in the water, right? So, that's our soft plastic there, okay, with the fly. So, when you cast it in the water, what will happen is, as you're retrieving along, that's not really telling us much, that's a bit better, okay. So, what is when you cast it in the water like this, what will happen is it just looks like a little soft plastic, right, is chasing the fly, see? That's what it looks like, and nine times out of ten they hit fly. If we do it over here like this, right, what's that, see? So what you've got there, okay, is you've just got the fly sitting mid-water perfectly, okay, and that just looks like a little bait fish that's scrubbing through the water there. So let's just... Um, Get a bit more of a close-up. Right again, let's work through here. Right, a bit of clear water in there, so there we go. Looks like a little freshwater fly being chased by the little soft plastic. See the beautiful action on this? This is why I got these uh, soft plastics in from America, okay? And if we go out into slightly deeper water like that and bring it towards just like that, see? Look at that, see? And the soft plastic sits head first like that, and it looks like it's just chasing that little fly that's just sitting perfectly in the water. And I've had so many double heads of redfin perch like this, doing this technique that it just, uh, yeah, it's really worth doing, you know, especially on big, deep rivers, right? So let's just put this down. So did everybody, did everybody see that? Do I need to do that again, or is that good? Are we happy? Right. Oh, hang on. I just need to sort this out now because I've got it on Zoom. That'll do. Too 
sticks. That one over there, that's good. Okay. Let's not let's try not to snap the rod. Alright, so does that make sense? Oh well cyber trouts, I've been fishing with this technique since the late 80s. You know, and I'm just surprised that no one's ever like done it. You know, I mean you have the people that um sort of knock you for it, but there's no right and wrong with fishing, mate, okay? As long as you're catching fish, okay, you're, um, oh, that was a hit. See that there, the rod tipped over? Come on. And redfin are a great fish, okay, to teach youngsters how to fish, all right? Now the other thing is too, it's basic science. Heaviest object on the bottom, that's what you're casting. The fly just trails. And fish it slow. Give the fish, oh. Now that was another snag. I felt the hit and then boom. We're gonna lose this, I think, come on. Come on, out you go. Cheeky bugger. This is where your fish structure. Right, your fish structure. Hey, Devil Rocks Gaming, how are you, bud? This is why your fish structure, because you want the... See, this is the difference, people. This is the difference. See this? Because I haven't tied these flies, they're already falling apart. <laughs> uh, okay, we should be on to it now. Come here, little buggers. Just drop down. That's the way. The fish are in this snag here, which is good. When you're younger and a bit silly, what you do, and remember people, first on this channel. <laughs> okay, you saw it first on this channel. All right, so. You know what I mean? There's there's no written articles on this style of do it. Now that's a good cast. All right. That's our spot, I think. I think there's a couple of fish under that snag over there. I saw a couple of little golden flanks, you know. And you still get quite good distance with this sort of technique. That's only a three gram jig head, but because you've got the balanced gear, right, you're able to cast it a mile. One of the few ways you can fish a soft plastic and have another like fly in front of it so the fly still looks like it's alive because flies never really stop moving in the water, you know. Oh, that's a cast and a half there. We're right on the snag here, people. That's where the fish are. Structure. Come on, get down to the bottom.
and I'm casting in a fairly good spot there. Okay, that's not too bad, but I will try and start aiming over here. It's just that with the way the breeze is blowing, and the other thing is too, I've got a three gram jig head on there at the moment. You can change it to five, but what that does is you'll cast further, but you won't necessarily get as good a fluttering action because sometimes if um, your um, soft plastic sink too quick, you know, it sort of tends to turn the fish off. That way, a really good technique is when they use these weedless jig hooks without any weight and they just retrieve the soft plastic in the water. And um, yeah, it's, oh, oh, come on. Oh, nearly. There we go. Beautiful. It's surprisingly cold for this time of year because with this amount of sunlight that normally heats up. Come on. I can feel that tail working on the soft plastic. I'm just going to target this area here. Sometimes with perch, it takes four or five casts to get them interested, you know? And also with perch, they'll dive headfirst into weeds and the soft one, boom, and disappear. They'll take a leader with it and everything. Here comes that wind, beautiful. And we'll rip the fly gear out in a minute. I'll show you another method with the fly gear, okay? And this is actually a really good sort of shallow to midwater technique because what it does, it just works really well um, in those sorts of depths, if you know where I'm coming from. So let's try out here now. No, I don't think that's going to be far enough, but we'll see. Here we go. And just enjoy your fishing, people. Don't worry about personal bests and all that rubbish. Just go there and try different stuff, you know? Come on, bud. Good. Oh. Uh, little bit of weed, but that's okay. What we might do is might shift to where we went or where we were yesterday where it's a bit deeper and a bit closer. Um, it's later in the day now, you don't really catch too much late in the day, you know. Well, not late in the day, I mean it's lunchtime, but this is the peak light. Ugh. That's right. Hopefully that's close enough to the snag, you know. We'll try it quicker now. But not too quick. Like I said, you want to fish it slow, you know what I mean? Right, now let's go in here where it's a bit deeper. That's better. I'm just gonna let that sit on the bottom for a bit too, like we did yesterday, okay? God's loyal, how are you, bud? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colour now. 
Uh, the gold shad worked yesterday. It might not necessarily work today. So what we'll do, Cyber Trouts is in here and getting dinner ready, good man. And then um, what we'll do is uh, we caught um, a perch on the trout soft plastic here. Like that. There we go, get in there. All right. And we're going to try this little rainbow trout soft plastic now for cyber trout. All right. Because Colours, sometimes a colour works one day, whoops, and doesn't work the next, you know? Let's see if we get any joy with the rainbow trout soft placky. All right, it's still sinking. Still sinking. Get my shoes back. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, that I was going to put another fly on here, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to fish with two. Funnily enough, three works better. It's a bit more manageable. <laughs> That's the way cyber trouts. <laughs> uh, cyber trout certified. Ronnie, I'm just going to reduce it down there. We can keep that later. Fluorocarbon is expensive, people. Don't like, uh, you know. Thank you to everyone that's watching on YouTube as well. Now this will be a little bit easier to manage. So yeah, just because gold shad worked yesterday doesn't necessarily mean it works today. Um, if you've got different like, uh, stages of uh, their uh, cycles and that sort of stuff, they can change colour, you know. Water conditions can change colours, everything, okay? So, let's see if Cyber Trout's prediction is correct. Right, I just don't want to fall over in here, that's all. Beautiful, beautiful, right. More distance straight away. I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer to this snag now. Oh, what's that? go all right let's bring it back in so we lost that at the jig head that's fishing <laughs> that's the way pub test how are you bud thanks man all right so we lost that at the dropper loop that's exactly where it's always going to break see all right so when you fish 
with the drop a loop, all it does is um, match the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is this. Let's just bring this across here. What we'll do is, oh, I'm just going to set up again. Got a little bit of wind with the um, sort of northwesterly direction. I've got a storm forecast for today. Let's bump and see if we can do something there. So did everybody um, enjoy that little segment on That um, rainbow trout off plastic is a bit of a jinx, cyber trouts. You know, yesterday we didn't catch anything, and today they got snagged. Nothing to do with angler, of course. Right now, yeah, let's get through here. <laughs> and you know what'll happen, Cybertrout? That's exactly what'll happen, bud. You'll have that day where, uh, you know, nothing else is working. We sit there and we mock the old rainbow trout off plastic and it'll deliver the goods. As is always the case with Murphy's Law. Rightio. Let's go again. And look, inline spinner fishing like this is a great way to fish because you're always busy, you know what I mean? So you cast the spinner out, you retrieve it, you can feel it working in the water, you know, little things like that. That's the snag over there, so what we're doing is we're just casting at the snag. There aren't too many big fish in here, it's just, you know... Ironically, summer is a good time to fish these sorts of waterways because they are, they've, they've dropped a lot in water level and all the fish are usually confined into the same areas, you know? Ah. rod for uh, spinner fishing as well you know I know exactly where we're going to be going with this fishing rod probably in the next month if it all goes well early season is just a very very sort of it's almost treacherous with the wet, wet roads and all that sort of stuff but um, I'm just shocked we actually caught a red fin perch in a dam on a spinner because like I said I, that's the first time I've done it in years right yeah and with red fin perch if you catch one don't scale it okay skin it they are absolutely impossible to scale, people. You totally waste your time. Lovely. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, dear. That's the snag. <laughs> or was it? 
Hmm. A lot of the really big redfin, um, you'll cast out and you'll hook them, right? And they'll stop moving, and you think, oh, I'm snagged. And then they'll start moving. Hey, Maury, how are you, bud? Welcome to the stream, mate. Hope you're having a good day over there in Chicago, Maury. What's going on, bud? Okay. Ah. Now, if you want to avoid snags, just lift your rod tip. It'll come in shallow. Then drop your rod tip and let it sink again, okay? Okay, let's do a couple of long range casts in here. That is a beautiful. Now, is everyone okay if I just move down a bit and try a couple of casts if that's all right? Oh, come on. It's a little bit of a follow there. Whoops. Whoops, stay there. Oh, that's nowhere near it. That wind's picking up, that's why. Let's bring it along there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duck down to this shallow end here right and just see if there's anything in there okay let's just turn this down a little bit right oh yeah that's not good so let's oh do that let's bring that in like that And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duck down here, okay, and just chuck or cast this um, freshwater, oops, freshwater spinner just in this shallow section and just see if there's anything, see if there's anything down here. a snag.
Oi! Don't do that. All right, let's go back. Just gonna try and fish underneath this little snag here. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Let this drop. This would be a good spot for soft plastics too, because it's a big drop off here. I didn't realize it was so deep. Come on. I'll go back and get those other soft plastics in a second. Get out of there. Good work. Unfortunately, I've gotten used to this seven foot fishing rod. I don't think I'll go back to the five foot six inch or the six inch rod. Okay, let's see if there's anything along the actual rock wall here. Same old story, you know, if you feel a bump at a certain depth, you sort of got a rough idea that there's structure around there. What I'm doing here is I'm just bringing this uh, freshwater spinner straight in parallel to the rock wall. At a reasonably slow speed, bringing it in, bringing it in. There we go. Now, there's another little bit here I haven't cast to yet. Get that in there. Then what we'll do is we'll try a five gram weedless jig head and we'll try another one of the soft plastic tails. Might even try the old, uh, might even try the old um, rainbow trout. Just see if we can break the jinx for cyber trouts. Now, change the angle. Lovely. Bring that in parallel. I'm going to put the rod tip under the water. Right, and what this does is this will bring the uh, freshwater spinner in at the depth that the rod tip's at. It won't go above it because we're not lifting it, see? So it's just going to come in at the same depth, much like a suspending lure. Oh, there you go. Just like that. Right, and... Sometimes the angle that you bring your lures in can have an effect on whether you get a hit or not either. So we have a, um, okay, so I see where the snag is now. Here, 
So if I work my way back through here, right, I've got about a six foot window where I can get a really beautiful long cast in here like this. Right, and fish behind these snags, which I didn't do before. Okay. And what I've done is I've cast as close to that little snag as I could. Oi, that was a little follow. Now I'm just going to try and cast one foot to the right of it like that. Okay, that's pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend four or five minutes in here, right, just um, casting and retrieving this freshwater spinner through this whole area here that I couldn't reach from over there. Okay, and then you never know, we might even, you know, fluke a fish. We'll see how we go. Beautiful. So each time I've just moved slightly to the right. Okay. Now we're going to go again, just a little bit more to the right again. And what I'm doing is I'm just covering every square inch of water. Um, when it comes to fishing and that, you know, I mean, ability has a little bit to do with it. But in saying that, you know, some people are just more thorough with the area that they um, fish. So it's going to take us about five minutes of casting and retrieving just to fish this little window of opportunity here. Right, nice, like that. There we go. Now that's gonna come in parallel to this snag, okay? At an even better angle than it did before. So let's just uh, work our way around as this is coming through. I can now see the snag here. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm standing directly in line with this tree that's fallen over in the water. So it's now dead straight at me. I can't see any branches on this side, so I'm just going to cast down here. Right, that's right on the trunk. Okay, I can see my lure. It's away from that area. I'm just going to let the lure drop. Right. Come on. Bring this in here, like so. And you never know, we might fluke a fish. Oh, we might not. Right, there you go. All right, people. So today, the freshwater spinner's done the job, you know? So today, the freshwater spinner's done the job. Let's just um, drop this down here. There we go. Rightio. Now... Just starting to get warmed up. Okay. Putting your um, swivel behind your rod tip is a great way to snap the insert out of your um, swivel. Oh, hang on.
I think that's the spot we cast before when we hooked that other fish. Okay. Yeah, look how much. Yeah, this wind's really picking up now. That's better. The other thing is too, people, um, with um, soft plastics and lures, don't be afraid to go big. Some of this actually being four inch soft plastics. Good old 100 meter, millimeter soft plastic tails and they've hit the three O hooks, much like a snapper hits a uh, bait, you know. No one was more shocked than me when that happened, I'll give you the tip. That's better. So what we might do now is let's put on a five gram um, jig head and see the difference in how that fish is yeah, just see the difference in how that fish is compared to uh, the three gram jig head. But what we'll try and do is we'll still try and use the two inch tails on it, mainly because I didn't bring any of the three inches. But that's all right, we know they work, that's all good. Because when you want to cover distances with um, soft plastics, right, that extra two grams in the weedless jig head makes all the difference. Okay, then you can go to seven gram. And if you've got a big, wide river with fast-flowing water, go to 10 gram or 15 gram, you know? Don't limit yourself just to being a track, you know? Oh, yo. So, good work. There we are. Lovely. Chuck that in there. Now, let's grab a 5 gram head with a little bit more line and see how we go. To the people of the channel. What have we got there? That's a bit longer. Excellent. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go to a five gram jig head. Okay. Have a couple of fishes with that, and then we'll right. Maury, how's your day going over there? Or evening on your cocoa butter, you well? Right, let's grab ourselves a little um, five gram jig head. If Maury's still around, that is. Go. Let's bring it through here. Another little soft plastic. Like so. Like so. through there, back through there, nicely done, beautiful, we put the scissors just there, just don't move that, that's why the stream's going, what we'll do is, that's the gold one again, actually one colour that I didn't try yesterday, right, was the um, shad. Let's try that. Excuse me. Let's try the shad, shall we? Now, is that going to be too big? No, that should sneak in. Would have preferred a three-inch tar, but we don't have one. 
So we'll bring that back through here, back through here. So Okay, let's see how this five gram is, yeah? All right, now this is going to be a lot easier to cast. I can feel it. it's only two grams, but in actual fishing terms, oh jeepers, that casts like a bullet. It might be sinking a bit too quick though. Let's see. Now we've just covered this area with the freshwater spinner. Right. Oh, that looks very good in the water. The action on these tails is unbelievable. Beauty. All right, let's have a look. And is the case with freshwater fishing people. Usually it's a fair bit of toil for minimum returns, but it's all good fun, though. That's a really good cast that I couldn't reach with the freshwater spinner. And what you're basically mimicking with these soft plastics is just a fleeing bait fish, you know, so let that sink to the bottom. The red fin are going to absolutely belt these. Is that already in the weed, is it? Yep, I think so. Yeah, in the... Um, in the freshwater rivers down south where you've got flowing water and it doesn't give the reeds too much of a chance to uh, form, bumping these along the bottom is going to be a very good way to fish. Yeah, this comes in a bit quick for my liking, but we'll see how we go. Beautiful cast. Oh yeah. Uh Redfin over about 35 centimetres have an absolutely cavernous mouth, right? So a hook this size is absolutely nothing for them. They'll just hit that side on and just swallow it whole. Right, yeah. Last couple of casts we've been going for a while. Snag bugger. Right, yo. I might use that as a moment to finish off the day, I think. Yep. All right, people. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw out a... Hang on. I think I need to mod myself first, don't I? Oh, you don't know how to do that. Hang on. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go... Slash... Raid Captain 
Rob's Ad Ventures. Right, enter. All right. So, people, thank you very, very much for tuning in today. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for your support. And uh, let's go and... Uh, Support Rob, come on. Why is it taking so long? Is he on or? Oh, let's try another one. Let's try that. Nothing wrong there. We made an error code. Excuse me for a second, people. Don't have that permission. What? Great. Hang on a second, Emma. Trials and tribulations of being a streamer, eh? Uh, oh, that's better. It's actually happening now. Yeah. 